Our goal today is to solve a Diophantine equation using the unique factorization theorem in z brackets i. So specifically, we want to find all integers x and y so that x cubed is y squared plus 1. The first thing that we notice is that y squared plus 1 factors as y plus i times y minus i. And it's this factorization which suggests to us that the Diophantine equation might be amenable to an attack via the Gaussian integers. Now, here's the claim that's going to motivate our progress on this problem. I claim that, uh, in this case, y plus i and y minus i are relatively prime. So let's suppose I've got a common divisor, d, of y plus i and y minus i. I'll take the difference of y plus i and y minus i, and I know that that difference is equal to 2i. Now, d divides y plus i and y minus i, so d divides their difference, so d divides 2i. 1 plus i squared is 2i, and since d divides 2i, this means that d divides 1 plus i squared. It's at this moment that something very exciting happens. We'll invoke unique factorization for the Gaussian integers, for z brackets i. So d divides 1 plus i squared, and we have unique factorization. So up to units, d is either 1, 1 plus i, or 1 plus i squared. At this point, there's two possibilities. d either isn't or is a unit. So I'll first focus on the situation where d is not a unit. So that means that uh, 1 plus i divides d, and consequently 1 plus i divides x cubed. And now I can take the norm of both of those, and I find out that 2 divides x to the sixth. So x is even. But if x is even, then x cubed is 0 modulo 8. But x cubed is just the left-hand side of the Diophantine equation that we're exploring. So if the left-hand side vanishes modulo 8, so too does the right-hand side. And the right-hand side is y squared plus 1. So y squared plus 1 is 0 modulo 8. This is a problem. There aren't any squares which are 7 modulo 8. And consequently, y squared plus 1 cannot be 0 modulo 8 for any integer y. As a result, our assumption that d was not a unit must have been false, and on the contrary, it must actually be that d is a unit. And that's actually enough to prove our claim, right? Our claim was that y plus i and y minus i are relatively prime. We picked a common divisor, d, of y plus i and y minus i, and we found that that common divisor can only be a unit. So let's see where this leads us. We've got that y plus i and y minus i are relatively prime. d is a unit, and what are the consequences of that? This is another situation where unique factorization comes into play. I've got y plus i and y minus i, and they're relatively prime. They don't have any common factors, and yet their product is a cube. Well, what does that tell me about y plus i? What does it tell me about y minus i? Well, any units that I've got around, I can absorb those into the cube. So I can conclude that y plus i must also be a cube. Okay, so d is a unit, and y plus i is a cube. And what cube? Well, let me just pick an arbitrary Gaussian integer, m plus ni. So y plus i is m plus ni cubed. I'll expand that out, and I'll factor, and I'll identify the real and the imaginary parts. So 1 is n times 3m squared minus n squared. That's what I got when I identified imaginary parts. And that means that n is a factor of 1, so n can only be plus or minus 1. So n is either negative 1 or positive 1. If n is positive 1, then 3m squared has to be 2. And that's not possible. 3m squared can't be 2. So as a result, n must be negative 1. That forces m to be 0. Ooh, but y is m times something, so y must also vanish, and then x has to be 1. So what did we do? We were thinking about this Diophantine equation, x cubed equals y squared plus 1. And through that proof, we've shown that the only solution to that Diophantine equation is when y equals 0 and x equals 1. And the proof, I think, is even more remarkable than the result. Because we analyzed this Diophantine equation that just involved integers by thinking in terms of Gaussian integers, right? We brought i into the picture. And the main theorem, the main tool that we used was unique factorization, which maybe until now seemed like a, kind of an anemic theorem that just told you that you could factor things, but here we're using it to solve equations. And I think that's a surprising application of unique factorization.